When it comes to making small talk in English, people will usually have a lot to say about the things that they like doing. So how about you? What do you like to do? And do you know how to talk about it in English? Let's practice together. Welcome to Speak to Learn English. I'm Katerina. Today we'll be talking about hobbies. The idea behind my videos is that you get a little bit more speaking practice in every week by having a short conversation with me. I'll ask open-ended questions about a topic, and I'll encourage you to pause so that you can say your answer out loud, and that way get more practice with your spoken English. Speaking English is the best way to improve as an adult language learner. I talk about this in a lot more detail in one of my previous videos, which I'll link in the description below. For now, let's go ahead and get into our topic, hobbies. Some of you already know the meaning of the word hobby, but just in case, a hobby is an activity that's done regularly in your free time for pleasure to make you happy. You can start thinking about what some of your hobbies are, and maybe you'll see some things that you like to do in our vocabulary section. So let's go ahead and talk about some vocabulary. Here's a list of hobbies that some people have with a picture to accompany each one. Knitting, playing sports like basketball, football, soccer, hockey, traveling, fishing, photography, gardening, writing, listening to music, playing video games, cooking, baking, painting, drawing, and other crafts, exercising, playing an instrument, horseback riding, watching TV shows or movies, and there are many more. Here are some other words that I'll use during the lesson today that might be new for you. Unwind. This is a verb that means to relax. Fiction. This is a noun, and it means writing that is made up or imagined. So it's telling a story about something that's actually not true or didn't actually happen in real life. The opposite is nonfiction, which is based on facts or real people and real events. And it can be a story, like a biography. Biography is another noun that means the account of the life of someone or something. And there can also be an autobiography, which is when a person tells their own true life story. Going back for one moment to the words fiction and nonfiction, they are nouns, as I said, which you can see if you look them up in the dictionary. When you listen to people speak in English, though, you might hear someone use the phrase, for example, nonfiction books. So in that case, the word nonfiction is being used as if it were an adjective. The actual uh, correct adjectives for these words are fictional and nonfictional. But as I said, uh, many American English speakers, and you'll even find in like things you read online that it'll say fiction books or nonfiction books. Anyway, let's go on. Two other words I'll mention are serotonin and dopamine, which are two specific neurotransmitters. A neurotransmitter is a chemical in the brain that has some effect on us, and these two in particular improve our mood. Amateur. This is a noun, and it means a person who does something, some activity as a hobby rather than as a professional. So it's someone who's not an expert in whatever they're doing. Priority. This is a noun, and it means something that is given very high importance. Now, let's go ahead and get started. I could ask you what your hobbies are, but we'll actually split this into two different types of hobbies. So my first question is, what do you like to do for fun? Go ahead and pause the video. I'll give you a second so that you can say your answer out loud. An alternative would be to write down your answer. Um, it's also a way that you can practice expressing yourself in English, expressing your answer. And remember to go ahead and look up any words that you want to be able to say, but you can only think of it in your native language and you can't think of it in English. So if you look it up, you can add it to your English vocabulary. In my case, for fun, I like to play outside with my son. We do things like playing baseball with an oversized plastic bat, or recently I found some little rackets that are 
kind of in between the size of a tennis racket and a table tennis racket, which is also called the ping pong paddle. And they're just the right size for him, and we had a blast playing with them. The next question is, what do you like to do to unwind? Go ahead and pause so you can say your answer out loud. In my case, to relax or unwind, I love to read. I'll probably have a lesson at some point that goes more into detail about reading in books because it's just one of the things that I truly enjoy doing. Did you catch the difference between those two questions? If we're doing something for fun, as opposed to something to unwind, we might say that the difference is how much energy does it take <laughs> to do that activity? Both activities might make us happy and help us to relieve stress or cope with stress. Um, but the connotation when we're talking about the difference between the, those two questions is that something that we do for fun will probably take more energy. It's more of an active thing than something we do to unwind, which is going to be more calm and with the purpose specifically of helping us relax. For some people, there might be some crossover there. Um, but in my case, I tried to pick two different activities that I enjoy that can fit separately into those categories. Okay, let's go on. Can you explain how to do one of your hobbies? Even if it seems like it should be very simple or something that everyone should know how to do, go ahead and go through the process of explaining it in English to use more of your English vocabulary. I'll let you pause. My answer will be about reading. So for the reading that I like to do to unwind, I usually think of having either a physical printed book or a digital book, which is also called an ebook. And I don't include audiobooks because with audiobooks, I usually feel like, well, since I'm just listening to the book, let me go ahead and do something useful while I'm listening. So the books that I actually read, you know, process the words with my eyes and it takes my full attention is more what I think of when I want to read to relax. So how do you read? You open your book, whether that's on a phone or a tablet because it's an ebook or the actual printed book and you start at the beginning or you go to the page where you left off and you read the words on the page one page at a time to read the story and enjoy it. Now, when we use the word story, we're talking about books that have a plot. Um, so that would be fiction books or things like biographies or autobiographies, where it's telling an account of something that has a beginning, middle, and end to it. With nonfiction, um, we wouldn't usually say oh, I'm reading a story, if it's an informational book. So we might say, I'm reading a great book, instead of I'm reading a great story. Here's your next question. How did you get into that? Take a moment, pause, and explain how you got started in the hobby, or one of the hobbies that you thought of at the beginning of the lesson. My answer would be that I started reading from when I was very young. My mom taught me how to read and she loves to read too. So she would spend time with me in the evenings and we would read a book together. And that really helped my love of reading to just blossom. And two of the books that I specifically remember that we read together were books called Poppy and Time Waits for No Mouse. Then when I was a little bit older, she would take me to the library. I remember especially for the summer vacation from school, we would go to the library and I would borrow just a huge stack of books, like 15 or 20 books at a time, and take them home and read them in the two weeks that the library allows you to borrow books before they're due. And then we'd go back to the library to return those and I'd get another stack of books these days, I usually read ebooks from my phone. 
Uh, it's just more convenient, it's easier and quicker, you don't have to take a trip to the library if you're borrowing it, or uh, to the bookstore if you're buying it. I still do enjoy printed books sometimes, so sometimes I'll order them or buy them um, if it's something that I know that I want to be able to have for future reference or to be able to make notes in. Now let's go on to our next question. Why do you enjoy doing that? Go ahead and pause so you can say your answer out loud. I'll answer about the other activity I mentioned that I like to do for fun, which is playing outside with my son. I enjoy that because it's nice that we're able to get some movement in and have some active playtime. And in fact, there's even evidence that physical activity in the sunshine can help to increase our levels of serotonin. And usually, you know, we're both laughing, which increases the levels of dopamine and just makes for a really, really positive experience. Now let's go on. Can you tell me about another hobby that you have? I'll let you pause the video so you can say your answer out loud. Another hobby of mine is coloring or drawing. It's something that I like to do to relax. I'm definitely an amateur, <laughs> but I find the process relaxing and I like to be able to look at the results. Sometimes they're nice, sometimes they're just okay, but I like it. What's a hobby you'd like to try or learn how to do? Go ahead and pause the video. I'll wait for you a second so you can say your answer out loud or write it down. In my case, I've wanted to learn how to play the guitar for quite some time now. It is not a high priority, which is why it hasn't happened yet, but maybe one day I'll actually go ahead and buy a guitar and watch some tutorials to get started or take some music lessons. We'll see. Now let's take a look at a picture. What do you see in this picture? Go ahead and say your answer out loud. I see a group of friends. It looks like they decided to spend some time together outdoors and hang out. They have a blanket that they put on the ground so everybody could sit down. And one of them brought their dog. They're having something refreshing to drink. Maybe it's hot outside. One of them is in shorts. And it looks like they're talking and having a great time. Everyone looks happy. So notice that when I responded in that sample answer, I used the present tense. Everyone looks happy, for example. Um, by the way, there's no right or wrong answer to what you notice in the picture. Um, and there's no right or wrong answer to these next questions either. But these are just to get some practice switching in between a couple of different verb tenses in English. So the next question is, what do you think they were doing before this picture was taken. So to me, you know, obviously they're they're talking now, but maybe I can imagine that they were taking a hike and they decided to rest for a few minutes. It looks like they're in the woods. Uh, maybe they were looking for interesting things to take pictures of, or maybe they found a few interesting places to take group shots together. I can see that there's a camera on the blanket, so that indicates to me that pictures either were taken at some point or will be taken shortly after this moment. Next question, what do you think they will do after? they're done talking on the blanket. Well, maybe they'll go get lunch. You know, it might be the morning and all they brought was something to drink during their hike. And after this, they'll go somewhere together to eat and have some more laughs more conversation, and then they'll each go to their houses. 
So notice that I used the future tense, will and then the verb in that case, as opposed to the past tense that I used in the last answer. Um, but I used it in the way that we usually speak when we're having a conversation. I said they'll a lot, right? Instead of they will do this. Um, either one is right. But if you are trying to practice sounding more natural as you speak English, then you can incorporate those contractions for the future tense as well. All right. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed the lesson today. Let's take a moment to review. What are some of the words that you were able to look up as you said or wrote down your answers to my questions? It would be good to make a note of them somewhere so you can review them tomorrow or next week and help them to become a solid part of your English vocabulary. Here are the words that I brought up at the beginning of the lesson. I'll skip past the long list of hobbies and go straight to the few new words that I pointed out. They were unwind, fiction, nonfiction, biography, autobiography, serotonin, dopamine, amateur, and priority. If you do want to hear the hobbies again, please feel free to go back to the beginning of the video and listen to that list again. And I've also included links to some of the supplies needed to get started in some of those hobbies. So check that out if you think you might want to try one. Are you interested in taking classes with me? If so, please check out my link in the description below. It's to my teaching profile and you can book a trial lesson and we can have an actual live conversation together. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to like it and subscribe. And if you can think of someone else who might like it, please do share. Have a great day. Bye.